Hello and welcome to this video where I will be showing you how to run Hunix inside of VMware, which is not a supported hypervisor. However, some people may want to give it a try, such as myself, and this video is to show you how to do that quickly and easily. There are some configurations and some hoops you need to jump over if you want to run Hunix inside of VMware. Thankfully, they are not that big of a hurdle. So to start, we're going to obtain Hunix. Hunix, for those of you who have never heard of it before, is allegedly the most secure uh, Tor connecting operating system in the world. We're going to come to the Hunix download page. We're going to look for any of these three download pages because they take you to the same place. We're going to download. Now what we have here is the page to download Hunix inside of VirtualBox. There's two versions of Hunix. One is with a graphical user inter interface for uh, new people and the other is CLI command line interface only. I'm going to pick command line interface because that is much simpler. So we're going to come here. Now we're going to download. And of course, if you're already using the Tor browser, you can download it from their onion page as well. Okay. After we download our uh, images here, I see I've got both the GUI version XFCE. That's what that means. And the command line interface version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on here. I'm going to come over to 7-zip and I'm going to extract all of this into a folder. Now we see we have my folder right here where I've extracted every all the contents of the OVA. I'm going to click on that and we're going to see here we have two disk images. We do have an OVF image. We're going to be ignoring these two files. We, don't, we only care about these two uh, files right here. This is the first disk and the second disk that is for the gateway and for the workstation. All right, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to create a new virtual machine from scratch. Right click, I'm going to click new virtual machine. We're going to pick the latest in hardware compatibility. Uh, we will not be installing the operating system. It is pre-installed, so we will choose the install operating system later. For the type, we can pick Linux. Uh, Hunix is based on Debian, so you can pick Debian 10 if you like. And now we're going to go ahead and name our virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and name my virtual machine Hunix Gateway. Number of processors, one is fine. Amount of RAM, two gigabytes is more than enough. For networking here, we have a couple of options. I'm going to be using the NAT for now, but we will need to add a second network interface in later. Disk type. I usually choose SATA for disk type, but SCSI should be fine as well. And now we are going to come here to use a existing virtual disk. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and click browse and we're going to browse for the first virtual disk image, which we previously unzipped. Going to go ahead and click finish. Okay, we're going to come up here and we're going to edit settings. Now, this virtual machine requires two network interfaces. The first network interface is to connect to the web, and the second network interface is for the workstation, or you can also connect other virtual machines to it as well, and it will function as a transparent Tor proxy. Now, this virtual machine does not have the DHCP enabled. Both network interfaces inside the machine are pre-coded to use pre-determined IP addresses uh, for pre-assumed networks. That means that if you want to use this virtual machine with as little configuration as possible, you're going to have to create a specific outgoing network for it to connect through. And that'll be our NAT. And we need to add a second network interface, virtual adapter. Now this is going to be for the internal network. We need to set this to a custom specific virtual, ne uh, virtual network. We can pick any VM net that is not being used. I'm going to go ahead and pick 10. Now VMware does have a bug where unfortunately it does not set the internal machines time to UTC time, which is what it needs in order to connect to the Tor network. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to VMware tools. Uh, we're not going to uh, synchronize the guest time with the host. We are not going to do, to do that. Now we come back to edit here. We're going to see we have a couple of superfluous items here that we are not going to need. We're going not going to need the CD-ROM drive. We are not going to need the USB controller. We're not going to need the sound card, and we're not going to need a printer. The only things that we need here is the memory, the processor, the hard disk, the 
net first network adapter to connect to the web, the second one for the behind the network, and that's all. Okay, now let's come up here to edit. I'm gonna go in and click virtual network editor. I'm gonna change settings. Now, if you don't have any, uh, I, I didn't realize this until just now, but you can only have one NAT network on VMware. So in order to use this NAT for the gateway, if you don't want to have to do any configuring inside of the gateway, what you'll need to do is set a subnet of 10.0.2.0 with a subnet, at, subnet mask of 255.255.0. Um, obviously, for this machine, we don't need to have the DHCP. Uh, we're going to come up here to NAT settings. We need the gateway to be 10.0.2.2. Again, that's if you don't want to have any uh, have to do any kind of IP configuring inside of the machine. Now, if you've configured your NAT properly and it is set to 10.0.2.0 uh, for the network, then you can go ahead and start skip and start up to the next step. However, in my case, I want to show you how to configure IP addresses inside of the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a different network that is not set to the 10.0.2 network. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll power on our machine. Now, when you come to the first grub menu here, we're going to go ahead and you'll notice if you boot to the regular where you do a regular boot, you'll notice that the disk is read only. It is not writable. And this creates a lot of problems when creating temporary files and that kind of thing. Um, a lot of the services fail to load. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to live mode. This means that everything's going to be stored in memory. All the changes we make are all going to be stored to a RAM disk, which means that they'll be wiped out every single time we reboot the machine, which means that you will have to do your configurations every time you boot the machine. Thankfully, there aren't too many configurations, so it's not too big of a deal. Okay, we've put it into Hunix now. We're gonna go ahead and log in with our username and password. The default user is user, and the password is change me. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and click understood, understood, and pick the option that is relevant to you, wherever you are. And I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. Now it's going to start something called system check and system check is going to complain about several things, which is why we don't need to be running it right now. So we're going to go ahead and hold down control C to cancel. So now what we're going to do is we're going to type out Unix pipe more just so that we can see this command here that we're going to be entering control C for the command. All right. So what we're going to do first is we need to fix the date. The date needs to be set to UC UTC time, and it needs to be within about an hour of the correct time. A great way to see the time in UTC is to come over to time.is slash UTC, and it'll give us the UTC time now, which is the 23rd hour. Okay, so let's type out our command now with the correct UTC date. Okay, now, if you are already on a 10.0.2.0 network, then your configuring is done. And all you need to do is restart the Tor service. However, in our case, we are not on a 10.0.2.0 network, so we will need to do some IP configuring, which I will do now. We see here we have our two network interfaces. The 10.0.2.15 is the interface intended for outgoing communications to the Tor network, and the Ethernet 1 interface with the 10.152.152.10 uh, IP address is meant for communicating with the Hunix workstation, or you can have other machines behind that as well. And it will function as a transparent Tor proxy. Transparent just means that the uh, VM behind this VM communicates to the internet normally, and uh, there's no need to configure or do any proxy setup on the machine behind. Let's go ahead and change the IP address. And here, you'll notice that we need to have a, an IP address that ends in a number between 1 and 24. And the reason for that is because there is an, a firewall rule 
built into the machine that restricts outgoing communications to between those numbers. You know, if you want to have a higher number, you can, but you'll have to change the firewall rule. So in our case, we'll just pick an ending IP number that is between one and 24. I'm gonna go ahead and pick 15. And broadcast, we don't really need this. Since there's no DHCP with this machine, we're not actually gonna be doing any broadcasting. Right, now we move on to the default gateway, sudo IP route. You'll see here that the gateway is uh, was, before I changed the IP address, it was set to be 10.0.2.2, uh, .2, but in our case, we've changed the IP address, so we don't see that anymore. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new default gateway. Check again, make sure that the changes took. All right, we see that our default gateway is now set to communicate to 192.168.1.1. Let's go ahead and restart the Tor service. All right, now that we've restarted our Tor service, let's go ahead and open up the monitoring function and see if we are connecting to the Tor network. And we see here we already have incoming and outgoing traffic, which means that we are indeed connected to the Tor network. I'm going to go ahead and hit Q and then Q again to exit out of this. Now, if you would like to run the system check, you will get an error message because you were inside of VMware, which is not a supported hypervisor. In order to uh, get around that error message, we'll have to disable it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to type in sudo edit at C, system check. And we're going to come down here to where it says no exit on unsupported virtualizer. Go ahead and backspace one and then control O, enter, control X to exit. Looks like running system check can be a little bit finicky here. Sometimes it seems to work, sometimes it doesn't. However, as we can see here, our services are functioning correctly. If we come over here to sudo service sdw date status, we see that this is indeed uh, running correctly. And if we run the tour and we look at the service for uh, tour, we see that that is also running correctly. And once again, we can run the tour monitoring tool NYX and see here that we are indeed connecting to the tour network. and We are sending and receiving traffic. All right, if you want to run the Hunix gateway, it's largely the same process. You're gonna create a new virtual machine you're going to use an existing disk. You're going to pick disk number two. And for the network interface, you are going to be sure to use the same VM net that you used for the Hunix gateway. And uh, the rest of the gateway, uh, the rest of the machine will be mostly pre-configured. You'll want to run it also in live mode when you come to the Grub bootloader. Because again, the disk is not writable. And so you will have issues if you attempt to uh, boot it normally. But if you run it in live mode, it will use a RAM disk. And of course, all changes will be wiped on reboot. If you want to run the Hunix workstation in VirtualBox as well, you do not need to do any configuring inside of the machine. However, you will need to once again set the correct date using the command that we used inside of the Hunix gateway earlier. Okay, if you have a regular operating system virtual machine that you would like to run behind the Hunix gateway, Let's come over here to our dev server and let's right click and we'll click on settings. Notice that my virtual machine network is set to VM network 10, which is the same VM network that the Hunix gateway is set to for its second network adapter. Okay, I'll show you my IP address settings here. sudo if config yes. two. And we see here that my outgoing interface is set to 10.152.152.11, which is the same network settings that the VM, uh, that the Hunix workstation VM uses. I also have my IP gateway, sudo IP route. My default gateway is also set to default via 10.152.152.10. Of course, I am indeed connected to the internet.
And of course we see here that uh, if I type out to, to update my packages on my development machine here, I am connected to the internet and I'm already receiving updates for Firefox. And I can click yes and those will download. I also have I also have a workstation machine which connects through the development machine which connects through the gateway machine. And it, we see here as a test if I want to uh, confirm via a simple search, simple search. We see here that I am using the DuckDuckGo onion address and which means I am connected to the Tor network. And of course, if I want to, I can refresh my IP location and see that I am connected to a Tor IP address. Remember that in both the gateway and the workstation, if you are using VMware, you must first go to settings. You must come to options. You must come down to VMware tools. Make sure that time synchronization is off. The next thing you must do is you must, when you boot the machine, you must type out the command sudo date dash s quotations time in UTC and and sudo hardware clock dash w. You must do that in both the gateway and inside of the workstation, after which you can restart the clock service with sudo service sdw date restart. And then check and make sure that it is functioning normally with stat status, which we see here it is. All right, well, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I hope this has been helpful to, for anybody who would like to try out the Hunix gateway and workstation inside of VMware.